So boys, I've asked you to come because this, what you see here now is what we replicate when we go in the barn, okay? So guys, basically, decision making in a confined space. So, and then this is what I replicated with the 20s uh, two weeks ago. And it really alarms me, guys, to see that how poor we are at decision making. Just simple 3v2s in a 15 to 20 meter channel between, say, from phase play between ruck and touchline. And I watch at a professional level, I see the same in sale with guys who've played professional rugby for 10 years and just have no idea how to uh, preserve space and the roles of each player. So simple 3v2 situation. We look through about eight to nine clips here and we'll talk, just go into the detail of it, okay? So the roles of each player and what, we, what the objective is and what we're looking to achieve. So pay no attention, guys. Just look at the first line of attack. I got V1, V1 behind. So we, we may go on to that at the end, but we're just looking at a 3v2. So what's the problem here, guys? <coughs> You're running, you forward pass, man. Middleman's too flat, is it? Yeah, exactly. So the middleman's too flat. So, go on to the next one, Jack. Just tab it on. So, guys, start there. What's the defence system likely to be? Three attackers, two defenders. Drift. Yeah, yeah, so you drift. Okay, right. So let it run. So, mm. what do you think? What's the problem there? Yeah, exactly. So the role of the first receiver should be to fix the first defender by what? How does he fix him? Running his inside shoulder. Yeah, running his inside shoulder. So he's under 20 internationals. Uh, this puts a 10 here. And then when he miss pass, why does he miss? So let run, yeah? Because obviously they're in drift. You miss. You just push on, use the touchline as a defender. Uh, four. four. Look at the numbers on there. Exactly, see that? So go back again, yeah? So guys, see? So, go on saying to these boys, when you miss pass, guys, there's got to be a reason why you miss. Not that, I think, the trouble is they do how much gym work now, they can see who pass the ball 20, 30 metres. So when you miss, there's got to be a reason for it. And the reason should be based on what? Stop your antennas here. If the second defender has come in. Exactly. In if that line. second defender gets in front of the inside defender, that is your trigger then to put it over the top. But otherwise... Mm. Okay, Jay, go on to let that run. And then they just make the tackle. So, go to the next one. Same again. You might have to come up to it now to go to the higher numbers. So just tab it on. No, no. Leave that, leave that on there and just tab it across. Yeah, to the whatever number it is. That's it. Which one you want to see, buddy? Whatever number's next. 13. 13. So we'll just go through that slow for me, yeah? So see the first receiver here, boys? What he needs to get to do is just by a slight movement to his inside shoulder. Stop with it. That's him now, fixed. No, basically, he could sit on the shit there, but... Basically, when he's in that position, that's job done. He now is totally isolated. Job done for first receiver. So the first receiver's role fell is fix the first defender by either running hard his inside shoulder or a slight movement and then go with the pass. But as soon as he's in that position, the defender, you've done your job. Bit too flat there again. So what about the second receiver? He's boy out the play outside the first receiver. What's his what's his role? Fix the second. Yeah, yeah. But his depth, yeah, his depth is crucial, guys. So the depth of the second player, guys. Because what you gotta do? So he needs to give me the first one, fix the first defender. The pass has to be pulled back then. So if there's a flat pass, obviously you're decreasing your time to make a better decision. Then if the outside defender decides to push and leave his weak shoulder, then you can accelerate it, the ball hard, and just attack the space. Hmm. Next one, Jack. What I remember it is. 
Okay. Hmm. You see, guys? Problem? Too flat. Or maybe you could tuck and give him one more for him, but I think he's just too flat. Yeah, put the next one, yeah? Yeah. Execution of pass, skill level. What's next? Number? So, go back there, yeah? So, there's a better example here, right? So, first is here, attacks the defender. So, you guys outside the first receiver, it's no good you run the same pace, really, because that's how you get too flat. Yeah, you got depth, haven't you? Yeah, good depth. It's good depth. So, this is, man, this is probably about 20 minutes into the session. We've had to walk and break it down and talk to it. But starting off is, you can imagine, it's quite alarm bells ringing for me. So, ball is depth. Depth is crucial. Right yeah. First receiver there, any mileage in running that blocking line? Passing and following? First receiver there, you actually ran a blocking line in over 30% move, well. After? Yeah, he passed, yeah. I think, yeah, a lot of players ask me this about, and they, I think, my opinion is, is that do your job first and then worry about support. Because if they're thinking about passing and running a blocking line, then they'll, they'll just run lateral. Because you want to straighten up, flex, do your job there, and then worry about what goes on and support after. Because it. Why really is to it? It's busy bringing the tackle in, doesn't it? Exactly. Yeah, it's Square him up. Take the game and that guy's out totally out. Same with 4v3s, guys. We're well, 4v3s. It's the same, but the channel wider. So obviously, you don't take so much out of the play, but the second and third, and etc. So it's crucial to. But the same principles apply. So as you can see, it's getting better now. So just moving on, just take that back there now. So all we're working on here, guys, I said to them as we moved on, break the first line of defense. So this is the touch line here now, exactly it is on the pitch. So what I've said to them is when you've broken on the outside, when's the only time we should run straight on the touch line? So maybe a winger. When's the only time that outside player should go straight on the touch line? Who should I then? When is... Yeah, when he thinks, basically, guys, some of you said it then. When there's no one in front of him. Yeah, clearly. If there's no one in front of you, just go about otherwise. Think about this now. We broke the first line, so play the first one on Jen and then run it slow. So, done our job here. Create the out. Right, stop it there. So, basically, now the defence is coming from obviously scramble now, yeah. going towards touchline. So, all they want is to him go down the touchline and then smash him to touch. So, all I'm saying is, as soon as we broke that first line, unless we're 10 yards on the try line, we get off the touchline and we look for support either side of the ball carrier. So then these players, now the first two players, Hang for Asia, become important, the supporting roles we just mentioned. So it's like, done your job, flex, create, preserved and create the space on the outside. We've got on the outside of them. Now, what's your next job? You stay alive, you're back in the game. And then support either side of the ball carrier. Poor execution of the pass. How many's left here? Yeah, two, is it? <coughs> okay, well one. <coughs> Get it run. So we'll just run after you broke the first line, yeah? So, boys, what, guys, what I'm saying is that by coming off that touchline, who's dictating to who? Because what normally happens is we run straight down there and the defender will dictate the attacker as opposed to carrying off that touchline. And this, I relate to it as blindside wing covering across the field, then full back or vice versa. So, basically, coming field, work to get out of the side of the ball carrier. I can see you making an effort on the second one there. That's probably a bit more difficult than it would be in the game. They'd have more uh, space between second, third, and third line of defence. Mm -hmm. So, what about the third player? Garcia. Pace on the ball. And he can only do that if he has 
the same as the second depth. bit. Depth. So depth and then pace on the ball. So all you boys taking this in, this will save us half hour out there. Oh, so we can only do 20 minutes out there of quality. So boys, does that, does that all make sense to you? Um, it just seems a simple thing, 3v2, but as you can see there, these boys, some of them play regional rugby, they all play in the Premiership. And at the start of it, you see how bad it was. I was amazed myself. Um, but I just no idea how to preserve the space. I preserve the thinking, miss passes, actually eats up the space, the same as catching the ball and running lateral. As Dan, what you said there about the support, is that if you catch it and lock the block, obviously the space is being condensed. Boys, you all okay with that? So, what's the first receiver's role? <coughs> How does he do it? Right, good. And then the second defender's, what's his job? Depth, yeah. And what else will he have to do? Communicate, yeah. And then third? Hold his depth and... Right, good. Help us. Okay, yeah. Right, guys, any questions on that? Pretty clear?